Hey friends, today we are hanging out in Epcot and I am so excited because there are so many new things to do today. I cannot wait to show you. First, we have the original Soarin' Over California coming back for a short period of time and we finally get to ride it again. I'm so excited for that. And then also the rest of the food and wine boots opened up. So we're gonna ride some rides, eat some food and have a beautiful Epcot kind of night. Anywho's, Let's go do this. It's another beautiful day in Epcot today, but it looks like it might be a little bit busy. So uh, we might have to buy Genie Plus to ride Soren. I am so excited to ride Soren over California. I like to credit that ride as the inspiration for my love of Disney parks because the very first time I rode it, I remember getting off and I was just so stunned. I couldn't even speak, it was so beautiful. My dream was always to travel the world and I never thought I would be able to, but I kind of got to do that on Soren and I just love it. And I think Soren over California has better smells. So I can't wait for us to go ride that. Of course, I needed to pick up my handy dandy festival passport. And here are the new food stands that opened up today. They've got the char and chop. They've got the wine and wedge and then the bubbles and brine. Looks like you've got uh, some porchetta there, some grilled impossible spicy sausage. Over here, you've got a bunch of different cheeses, a jumbo shrimp cocktail. Uh, oh, a crab claw cocktail. There's a lot. So uh, we're going to grab some of the food and uh, just kind of hang out in World Showcase. Because Food and Wine Festival is so big and it lasts longer this year, uh, they didn't open up all of the boots on opening day. They opened up a majority of them, but they kept uh, six of them uh, not open. And then they opened them up uh, throughout the past couple of weeks. And then today is the last day and all of the boots are open. I don't know why Disney does that, but I guess it's kind of smart because I keep coming back. I think maybe we should grab some of the food now, then go ride Soren, and then come back and get some more food. So that way uh, we have time to actually sit down and enjoy it a little bit. Here is a closer look at the char and chop and uh, the menu itself. And it actually has some pictures there. They've got the roasted uh, porchetta with lemon parsley salsa. Oh, and shaved fennel salad. Oh, I love porchetta. And then they got the grilled impossible spicy sausage there, which is looking pretty good. I might actually want to try that. And then they got like uh, the uh, trio of shaved meats. So lots of good stuff, a couple of beers and even a Bloody Mary. They're actually cooking the porchetta right out back, right behind the booth itself. They actually have a little grill area set up. And they're also toasting the bread for the, uh, uh, the meats. So that's kind of cool, but look at that porchetta back there. It is slowly turning and it looks amazing. I'm gonna zoom in. Look at that char. Holy moly. I can smell it, the smell is amazing. It's funny because anytime I ever get porchetta, I always get someone saying that I say the word wrong. Like a lot of people say it's supposed to say like porchetta, but I say porchetta. I grew up in Pennsylvania and I went to like tons of VFWs and uh, state fairs and like local spots where they'd have porchetta dinners uh, like at the firehouse and stuff like that. So let me know, am I saying it right? Do I say porchetta right or is it porchetta? Here is everything from the char and chop. We ended up getting the impossible sausage, the porchetta, the meats, and then uh, the little beer flight that they have. And the beer flight, I'm kind of excited because one of them is a midnight espresso coffee porter, and then they have a lager and a German pilsner there. And I just can't get over the fact that I'm eating this food right here, and they're cooking it back there, and it just smells amazing. It's such a shame that I had to give up my table because the sun was shining right down on me. Uh, and I finally got a table, but uh, I had to move and give it up. So I made my way over here to the uh, little uh, planter area and uh, decided to live on the edge. And I think we're gonna dive in. Maybe start with the impossible sausage here. It is so funny because right now I'm like sitting on my knees uh, on the pavement about to eat some impossible sausage for the first time. I've never had impossible sausage before, but it looks pretty good. I hope I like it, so here we go. 
one of the things I always say about impossible uh, like food items is uh, it always tastes pretty identical to what it's trying to be but it never has the right like texture you know what I mean I like it, it tastes good, it's definitely very spicy. Be prepared, I'll tell you that right now. And it tastes just like a sausage, but after like two cheer, like after like two chews, it's just like mush. So it's kind of strange, but I do like it. Now I think we'll grab ourselves the porchetta here and uh, dive into the porchetta. And this one, I know I'm gonna love. I cannot believe that this is only $6. Like that's incredible. You get so much porchetta on there. That's a big amount and I can't get over the flavor. Look at the seasoning on there. That's the salsa verde that they're talking about and I can't wait. I, I, it's gonna be so good. Here we go. Mm. The porchetta usually is a festival favorite for me. Uh, and this year, I, I'm gonna have to stick with it and say that this might be one of my favorite food items again. Like, I love this. I would put this in the top five spot. Definitely. It is so good and packs so much flavor. Like, so much flavor, especially since they added the lemon in there. But holy moly, I love it. I also realize I'm probably triggering all of you by having all my stuff hanging off the edge there. Uh, so I think I'm going to dive into the beer flight now. This one looks like the porter. I didn't look, but it looks dark enough. So here's the espresso porter. Ooh, oh, 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 wow. Motorworks Brewing, right here in Bradenton, too. I really like that Midnight Espresso Coffee Porter. I hope that's the one, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, that was good. Motorworks Brewing, Midnight Espresso Coffee Porter from Bradenton, Florida. Very fancy, I like that one a lot. And the other ones were pretty good, but that Espresso Coffee Porter was my favorite one. And then I would say the Pilsner. This one was okay, I didn't like the lager. I'm not a bit, I, I mean, I, I, do, I do like a lager, but uh, I like uh, a Yingling lager. If you've ever wondered what it would be like if you run into me in the parks, usually you'll find me doing something like this sitting on the side of a fence with all my food lined up, drinking a beer. And now here is a look at the meat assorti, a trio of shaved meats with baby arugula, pickled mustard seeds, truffle oil, and grilled ciabatta. And I love how they were grilling up that ciabatta bread over there. That was actually looking pretty cool. And uh, yeah, overall the char and chop has been knocking it out of the park. Like it's so good. The char and chop did not disappoint. The porchetta, like I said, I put it in my top five of food and wine food items, honestly. Uh, but we gotta keep moving along. I wanna show you guys another booth and then I wanna go ride uh, soaring over California. I've been hyping it up because the hype is real with this one. Up next is Bubbles and Brine, and here is a look at the menu. They don't have a big menu, but I like how the colors of this are the same colors for the Disney 100. It even has a little flag hanging off of it. Uh, but the menu is pretty simple. A little jumbo shrimp cocktail, a little crab claw cocktail. Crab claw cocktail? <laughs> it just sounds so funny. And then uh, some uh, beverages with alcohol. Oh, Dom Perignon, $69. Should I get one? Should I get a box? Should I get a should I get a glass of Dom Perignon? A glass of Dom Perignon. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I'm pretty sure that's the fancy champagne. And it's like $69 a glass. And I've always wanted to try it. So I'm thinking, like when in Epcot, like if I was gonna have a glass of Dom Perignon, Dom Perignon, Perignon, I feel like it would have to be in a memorable location. And I would like that memorable location to be Epcot. You had it. Oh, there it is. I hear it's the fancy kind. It looks the price of this. $400 bottle. So. That's a $400 bottle? Up to, depending on where you get it from, between $200, $400. Wow. And how many glasses do you think you get out of that? Uh, about Three. six. About six? Yeah. Wow, so the price point is actually not that far off. Wow, holy moly. 
And did you hear him say it was like a $400 bottle? You're paying $20 extra to drink Dom Perignon basically in Epcot, and I'm okay with that. I'm happy. I feel like if I was gonna do it, this is the spot. I kind of already crumbled up my receipt, but $83 for one glass of champagne and two pieces of shrimp. But they did give me the cork to the bottle. Look at that. That is actually really nice. Dom Perignon, vintage 2013. And can you believe that uh, this bottle costs, I think he said $400? And the price point, like even though this is $69 a glass, that's literally just about how much the bottle cost. Like if you add up all the glass, he said he can get like, uh, I think he said up to maybe 10. So it's not that far off. And uh, it's time to try my first sip of Dom Perignon in Epcot on a trash can. Cheers to Dom Perignon. And if you think I'm crazy for buying this and it was $69, I think you guys might forget when I drank the $100 bottle of water at the Grand Floridian. <laughs> so, here we go. You know, I'm gonna be honest, it tastes like champagne. I can't tell a, di I can't tell a difference between the $400 bottle and this one. I'm sure there is. And uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of different distinct taste in there and stuff like that. But personally, I, I can't tell. But I do fancy, I feel fancy. I feel like an extra, I, I, I feel like there's something extra there. Just, I feel glorious actually. Pinky up, darling. Now to go with my Dom Perignon, a little shrimp cocktail, a little shrimp on the bobby. Look at the size of this shrimp though, holy moly. That is massive. That's a big shrimp there. Look at how crazy this is. We're in Epcot, we're eating giant shrimp, drinking Dom Perignon, about to ride soaring over California. Can things get any better? I feel like this isn't like something you would do regularly. I mean, I wouldn't do regularly. Uh, it's not like I'm gonna be coming to Epcot to get Don Perignon all the time. But right now, I feel good. I feel like this is actually really amazing. So now it's time for the shrimp. I honestly never thought I would say that a shrimp is too meaty, but holy moly, that is too meaty. It's so strange, like the, the, the texture. I've never had a shrimp this big before. And look at, look at the tail. You can just pop it out right here. Look at that, easy peasy. I'm actually taking my time with this one. I actually might carry it with me to Soren. One sip at a time. You don't want to drop anything. It's like $10. You like spill a little bit? 10 bucks. The Dom Perignon is making its trip all the way over to the land pavilion. Cheers to you, journey into imagination. And cheers to you, monorail. Cheers to you. Spaceship Earth, cheers to you, trash can. It's time to make our way into the land and ride Soren. And if you've never rode Soren over California before, it's uh, basically uh, the same thing that they have now, Soren around the world, but it's all shot in California. And they use like real like cameras and not CGI. And the smells are better because you go through an orange grove. It's absolutely amazing. And the only difference is Soren around the world has better transitions. Like it, kind of transitions a lot better this one it, it's not so smooth you know what i mean but i love it regardless like i said favorite attraction and uh we're heading in still got the dom perry on with me we're soaring we're flying oh my lord look at this guys the lightning lane is so backed up the standby line is at 60 minutes holy moly Wow. Hey, howdy, hey. Look at that. Hi, how are ya? I'm waiting in line. Hi. I still have the champagne with me and I'll let you know how long the wait is for Lightning Lane. Even though that says 60 minutes, it's gonna be much longer, especially because the Lightning Lane is backed up the way it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're here. Hanging on to the last drop. Still got at least two more sips in there. There is definitely a cult following for Soarin' Over California. Seriously, I haven't seen this attraction this busy in forever. Look at that. Last sip, here we go. 
I have to let it go. So sad. We also got lucky and got C, which is the newest theater. And I'm excited because I've never seen Soaring Over California in Theater C before. Disneyland over in California usually switches their uh, Soarin' over to Disneyland, uh, Soarin' over California during their Disney California Adventure Food and Wine. It's very confusing. We have Epcot Food and Wine, they have Disney California Adventure Food and Wine. And uh, the past like two years, Disneyland has switched back to Soarin' over California just for that, you know, festival. And this is the first year that Disney World has decided to do it and I'm happy for it. The best way to ride Soren, in my opinion, is Theater C, uh, Section B, and Row 1. That's the way. Soren to Tower. We are ready for takeoff. I love the different smells, the orange groves, the golf scene, the uh, the helicopter. It's really, it, it's something else. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But let me know in the comments, which one do you like better? Do you like soaring around the world or soaring around California? And now we're gonna head back to the other booth that hasn't opened yet. Right here is the Wine and Wedge, and they've got an assortment of artisan cheese and compliments. They've got a balsamic souffle, a southern primito cheese, and then a lot of other wine and cheese. Literally, 
it's in the name, Wine and Wedgie. <laughs> wine and Wedgie. <laughs> but also they've got some Apple brandy and another flight down there. But honestly, I'm too full. I don't think I can get any of this. It does look pretty good though. Look at that. If you like cheese or if you like uh, wine, then this is the one. I definitely feel like I've tried enough food today and plus I had a fancy champagne so we're gonna skip over that one but still hang out maybe go ride some more rides and oh there's one other booth I want to show you that didn't open up that was supposed to open up but I don't know why for some reason Swirled Showcase did not open up today this is like a soft serve stand um, I could pull up the menu but uh, yeah it just didn't open I guess I can ask somebody but I'm sure they don't know why either it's definitely got to be some technical difficulties so technically not every booth is open yet <laughs> we still got one more did they do this on purpose too look at that beautiful monorail changing colors Wow I also feel like it's driving a little bit slower than it usually does. That's cool, it gives me more time to enjoy it. No. We made our way down to the Grand Fiesta Tour and uh, we're gonna head into Mexico because I met up with some friends who wanna stop and get some chips and guacamole from La Cava. This is literally the guacamole that made me like guacamole. Like I never, I never had guacamole until I had it at La Cava, and now I'm obsessed. The guacamole and chips are always amazing. Like I said, it's literally the, the guacamole that turned me on to guacamole. And then I also got a corn old-fashioned. Usually I like to get the lily margarita or uh, the avocado margarita, uh, avocado margarita. but uh, I think uh, the old-fashioned is fitting, especially for a night tonight. Dom Perignon. Now that we've had our uh, little corn old fashioned and uh, some chips and guac, uh, it's just about that time for the fireworks. So we're gonna go get a spot. Oh, it looks like it's gonna be so busy here. Like it's gonna be impossible to find anywhere against the uh, water. So we're probably just gonna be standing in the background over here. But I think the fireworks are literally starting in like three minutes. Oh yeah, we have three minutes, 9.57. We're taking the uh, local exit, leaving before the fireworks end so we don't get stuck in the uh, rush of people trying to leave. Oh, hi! <laughs> oh, but it's so hard to, like, you know what I mean? I kind of want to stay and watch the show. You say I'm now, just for Does he, you know what I mean? Yeah, Cody, that will always be the same coming. It will never cease to be a living blueprint of the future.
And with that, we are done here today. I had a lot of fun though. The food was great. Soaring over California was amazing. And it's nice to just hang out in Epcot. Hang out with some friends, enjoy the beautiful park and all of the amazing things that you get to do here. We're so lucky to live so close to Disney. I was just talking about this with my friend. Just being able to hop in and enjoy an evening at Epcot for the night. I'm just so blessed. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Of course, we couldn't end the video without a little cameo from Gracie girl. And I got her her favorite little pup pup cakes there. Oh, you want this? You precious little angel. Take it. Go ahead. Oh, no. You dropped it. I didn't drop that. You want me to pick it up? You gonna take it? Oh! <laughs> Yo! Just like that, huh, Gracie? <laughs> Yo, I don't know why I love watching my dog eat and drink, but it just makes me happy. Every time Gracie's drinking water, I'm just like, good, good, drink up, good girl, drink that water. Eat that puppy, girl, yes, yes. Ooh, ho, ho.